Welcome back to season six. Season six of what? The Bonfire. Welcome back, everybody. We are here at the bonfire, and we are so excited for this episode. Um, we're going to be talking about something so special to us, and I'm going to be your host for today. Um, I'm Sister Patterson. I'm a missionary here in Nashville, and I've been serving for about nine months, and I've absolutely loved being here. Um, I'm from Seattle, and um, definitely very different, but also really similar. I love the green here in Tennessee. And we're just so excited to be here. And I have my friend Jamie here with us. Um, But before we get into her, we're going to have a little song. And we're so excited. We'll see you in a sec. and white wouldn't be a color and we'd all love one another every day peace would be overflowing and every sunset would be golden and parents wouldn't teach their kids to hate call me a dreamer but I'm a believer that we can be better than yesterday call me crazy but i'm thinking maybe we can make the world a better place if i was the hand of god there'd be no more war no pieces on the floor from a broken heart Every line would catch a fish Every child got their wish When they see the night light up from a shooting star Call me a dreamer But I'm a believer That we can be better than yesterday Call me crazy thinking maybe we can make the world a better place if I was the hand of God and if you think that you can't make a difference with what you got Every tidal wave starts with a drop Call me a dreamer But I'm a believer That we can be better than yesterday Call me crazy But I'm thinking maybe We can make the world a better place Well I'd make this song come true and never stop If I was the hand of God If I was the hand of God Oh, 
Awesome. Thank you so much for that beautiful song. That was so powerful. It was amazing. It was awesome. Spirit's so strong right now. Um, and I introduced myself, um, but we also have uh, my friend Jamie here who recently was baptized in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And just introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, my name is uh, my name's Jamie. I'm born and raised here in Nashville, Tennessee. And like she said, I was just baptized here at the end of April. And yeah, that's me in a nutshell. I've got two boys. Awesome. Thank you so much. And um, this week's episode of The Bonfire is all about um, what we call the plan of salvation or God's plan. Another name for it is the plan of happiness. I love that one the best. And it's talking about our perspective on the plan and everybody's different perspectives on the plan and how it's blessed us in our own lives and how it continues to help us um, throughout our lives. And Jamie, I know you have a really powerful story um, about how this plan, learning about it, has um, really helped you in your life. And um, honestly, I'd love to just hand it over to you and you can just share your story. Yes, absolutely. Um, so a little bit about me is I, I grew up um, in the Methodist faith um, my entire life. Um, up until recently, I had a very, very spiritual family. We never missed church on Sunday. We always were at Sunday school. We were always very, very involved. And I'd say when I was about a teenager, I started to, as most of us do, kind of ask harder questions, ask us about our faith, kind of see what we really, really believe. And I noticed a lot of things that were hard for me to really accept in my faith. Um, I really struggled and tried my best to kind of just pray, and that's where I had been. Um, I would say about 16, 17, 18 is where I knew how much I loved Jesus, and I could get behind everything that Jesus taught and thought this is a wonderful, everything about Jesus was just wonderful to me. But there were things that I was taught that didn't sit still. They didn't sit right. And I kind of stayed in this place for a long time where I want to say I was kind of half believing and half in my faith where I was. Um, you know, I have a lot of issues where I just struggled. I struggled and I was very, very uncomfortable. Um, I knew how powerful faith was. Um, and I just felt lost for a very long time. I wanted to get a stronger relationship with God, but it was very hard for me because it I, I didn't quite believe everything that I had been taught, um, which is okay. It's always okay to have questions, but there were things that didn't sit right with me to be able to teach them to my children. Yeah. Um, so then... Um, I had, um, I got married and had two kids and my first one was born with, um, autism and special needs. And I was trying to get strength with that and deal with the challenges that were with having a special needs son. And so I was like, I really need to get back involved with the church. I need to find my place because I need faith. I yeah. need, do not like having a big missing gap in my life. And I knew I had been struggling, but the best way is to, you know, to read and pray and figure out the best you can. So I started trying to um, pray more in all the questions I still had, which I'll get into a little more detail at that in a little bit were still there and I kept trying to bring my kids someplace and I was learning very quickly that my um, oldest son, the one with autism, did not have a place and that really didn't sit well either. We were turned away from many churches saying they didn't have a special needs program and that mm -hmm. we could just watch it online and I was like, how am I supposed to get more faithful, more involved if my son Jack doesn't have a place? Mm. I was like, this doesn't seem like Jesus, Jesus would invite everyone here. You know, mm. God made Jack too, so he should have a place. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying every single church is like that, but I went through a big struggle trying to find some of uh, just a place to take us. So then I got discouraged yeah. and stopped going for a very, very long time. Um, I still continued to pray, but I, like I said, I felt like I was stuck in this limbo for a very, very long time. Then my husband passed away um, very suddenly um, and unexpectedly from a heart condition that we didn't know he had till mm -hmm. he had passed. 
And I knew I wasn't going to make it through that unless I found some strength and faith again. So I started going to church again, found a place that my son could go with all my family back here. Mm -hmm. And I was going, but like I said, again, I was in this limbo. I felt like I was in these, mo I was in these, going through these motions that none of it really felt right. I felt like I was there searching for something, but it wasn't there. Yeah. Um, which was hard for me because my whole family was there and I thought, well, I'm older now. I've been through so much more. It's going to be easier. I'm just going to be able to get in there and it's going to be okay. And they're going to be there with me. And they love me and adore me. And I want to make them happy because they were just happy I was going to church because it had been probably eight years since I had mm -hmm. gone. It had been a pretty long time since I had been a, a member of anywhere. Mm -hmm. But I, it just, it wasn't right. It just still wasn't right. But I thought having some kind of faith and believing in Jesus and trying to live by what Jesus taught mm -hmm. was still important that I was going to just keep going and see where it was going to take me. So I started studying the Bible a lot more again as well, um, trying to find just answers for what I was looking for. And then um, I started to date someone who was of the LDS faith. And about um, a while into it, I thought, honestly, I thought I was just going to read some scripture to get a better understanding of him. I was so surprised of what happened after that. Um, I really thought I was just seeing if you could have an interfaith relationship, what that meant, and just try to have respect for him as well. To be quite honest, all I knew was like sister wives and things like that. <laughs> that's not evident of the faith whatsoever, but that's all I knew. Yeah. So I was like, I need to figure out about this just mm -hmm. in general, um, to be fair, to understand. Yeah. Um, I had met people of the LDS faith growing up and I knew they were always very nice. And that was about all I knew. So I started to read, um, and then I started to read more and more on my own. I originally just read, I think, a little bit um, on the main website, mm -hmm. um, just about, like, the basic beliefs and things like yeah. that. And then I remember um, I started to read the Book of Mormon, and I also started to read the volumes of the, the Saint volumes. Mm -hmm. I read the first two of there because I realized I knew no accurate history of the faith as well. So I started to read all of those, and all I can tell you is I was completely shocked. It was like there was all the answers to questions I have asked myself for so long were mm. right there. Um, the day, the night I remember reading about the plan of salvation, I can only explain it as this huge feeling. It makes me emotional to talk about it that came over me. Mm. And I was like, this is, this is what I've been looking for. And I had no idea I would find it there. Mm. Um, like I said, I thought I was just kind of researching to be nice, and it was, I was so blindsided. Then I wanted to read more, so I just kept going. Um, and specifically with the plan of salvation, I, I had a big problem with my faith thinking only, uh, my previous faith thinking only, you know, a baptized Protestant Christian goes to heaven. Mm. I couldn't get behind that. I just thought that does not show how loving our heavenly father is. Yeah. And then I started, um, reading about the plan of salvation. And I was like, Oh my goodness. I mean, he has a place for every single person. This is exactly yeah. what it just was that feeling in your heart, you know, where you're like, this is what I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, it was one of the most amazing nights and I will always remember it because I, I was shocked. Like I said, I did not expect it at all. If you would have told me 20 years ago, you would become a baptized member. I'd be like the, you know, the sister wife. What? <laughs> what? Um, but specifically the fact that God has made such a beautiful plan and that he has a plan for everyone then I thought it also, I, you know, I was a person who believed always, you know, we should love 
everybody, Mm -hmm. everyone, um, doesn't matter what religion you are, doesn't matter anything. We all have different opportunities while we're here on the earth. And I couldn't make sense out of some people born on a side where what if they never crossed a missionary? What if they didn't do like, what was God's plan for them too? Yeah. And learning that he had a plan for everyone that even if you mess up here on earth, you can pass away and you still get, yeah, you still get, um, multiple chances to go over and over again and that is what I had been looking for Mm -hmm. just something of this beautiful plan that involves everyone across the world where yeah God loves us and it's just so evident and so I kept reading um, and I think I read for nine months until I contacted the missionaries and by then I was ready I knew what I wanted to do and so they did their first and I asked them to do it on plan of salvation Mm. and that was the day I decided for sure that I wanted to get baptized was that day Um, so yeah it felt like my whole life I had been wanting an answer to a question and there it was it was exactly what I had been looking for I love that thank you for sharing your story I know Mm -hmm. that was I got chills at the end of that and you're just talking about how that's so powerful about that last that, that first lesson you had with the missionaries and that's when you decided like hearing this plan I think it fills in so many pieces of that puzzle mm-hmm. and before we kind of talk a little about your story we'd love to hop into another segment talking mm-hmm. more about this plan that um, God has for us mm-hmm. and we'll see you in a sec. In such a fast-paced life with so many questions, have you ever stopped and wondered, who am I, where did I come from, why am I here and where am I going? You are a child of a loving God. And before this life, you actually lived with Him. We all lived with Him as His spirit sons and daughters. And He wanted us to become like Him so we could have all the blessings that He has. And in order for us to do so, we had to get a mortal body and live mortal lives. And so he created a perfect plan for us to come down, to receive these lives, and to be tried and tested and experience all these things. And at the center of this plan was Jesus Christ, is Jesus Christ. Because of him, we are able to live with our Heavenly Father again. God, through Jesus Christ, created this earth for us to live these mortal lives on, to experience these trials. We're gonna struggle. We're all going to fall and we're all going to sin. And God's given us these commandments that if we follow them, we're able to find this relief, this peace, and this help in our lives. We're not always going to be able to follow the commandments. We're going to fall short. We're going to sin and we're going to experience that guilt and that, that sorrow in our hearts. And God knew this. God knew that we were going to struggle and he blessed us with the Savior. Just like I said at the beginning, Jesus Christ is the center of God's plan. That through his atonement, he was able to help us be forgiven of our sins as we come to him and ask for that forgiveness. Eventually, we'll all have to leave this life and we'll go to somewhere called the spirit world where those who didn't have an opportunity to learn and grow and know about Jesus Christ on this earth can have that opportunity because we know God loves us and wants all of us to have that. And eventually, like Jesus Christ, we'll all be resurrected and we'll be able to stand in front of him and and to be judged according to our our works and our desires. And just like I said before, Jesus Christ understands us and he loves us and wants what's best for us. And he's going to put us to where we are going to be happy for eternity. And so there's three kingdoms of glory where we will be placed. And the first kingdom is called the celestial kingdom. And that's for those who lived the gospel in their lives and accepted it and really learned and grew and progressed and tried to become like Jesus Christ. And the second kingdom is called the terrestrial kingdom. And that is for those who lived honorable lives and didn't choose to fully accept the gospel. The third is called the telestial kingdom. And that's for those who struggled to make the right choices in their lives, but God still loves them and wants them to be happy. And this is the plan of salvation. This is God's plan for us so that we can return to live with him and be happy for eternity. And the knowledge of this plan has changed my life forever. And I know it can change yours. 
And so I encourage you to pray about it. Ask God if this is true. And I know he'll answer you. And reach out to the missionaries. They would love to teach you more about this plan and show you how it can change your life, how it can bring you and your family together forever. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Wendell Schaefer, for that amazing message. Um, that is something, as a missionary, we share every single day with people that we talk to. And it is such a powerful thing in our lives, knowing that there is a plan for us and that there's something greater for us here mm -hmm. on this earth and even past this life. Um, I think that's brought a lot of comfort to me in my own life, knowing that you know, death isn't the end and that there's more to this. And there's a place for everybody, like you talked about. And honestly, like I kind of wanted to like kind of break down your experience and your story okay. and what that's meant for you. And I know you talked about the like the questions that you had like throughout your story and how when you found out about this plan um, that God's provided for us, that you felt like some, a peace slid into place. Can you like kind of mm -hmm. like describe more about that? It's just the idea that I had had of God, everything that we are taught, like he is loving and merciful. And then especially of Jesus Christ, I mean, everything, it just made, it made so much more sense to me. It was God loves you so much that he has literally thought of every way you can go, mm -hmm. every decision you can make, and he still has a way for you to join him in the kingdom, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Um that's what I, I, I just truly believed he loved everyone and that he wasn't dooming people mm. to eternal pain and suffering. I was like, that goes against everything we're taught. That also goes against the love of Jesus mm. who loved everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, he loved people who were literally crucifying him. Yeah. Um, it was, that is what finally made sense. Cause it was like the whole, and then honestly as well, just the community of everyone with the LDS faith, um, you know, I came in and everyone has helped me and my kids. And I was like, these people, 100%, they practice what they preach too. Um, but yeah, it was just the peace that I felt like this was really what our loving God and what Jesus, what it really meant to be, mm -hmm. um, just gave me that peace. And I just thought it was so beautiful that every single person had a spot, mm -hmm. um, you know, my special needs fund, he has a spot, he had a plan. I mean, before I would have been like, there was no plan. Like this just happens, things happen. It was like, he really, he thought of every little thing, yeah. even of how I, how I got baptized when I was, if I think about it, when I was introduced to the faith, even caught me by surprise, but I think it came in the right time in my life mm. for me to be in the spot where I was it. open to yeah, it as well. Exactly. It's really amazing when you go back and I look at everything and I'm like all these, all the hardships, everything I felt like still led me here. Mm. Um, and that has given me so much peace. It doesn't mean that um, the process and everything else about it was always easy, but mm. it's not supposed to be easy necessarily. Yeah. Um, but loving him and the word, understanding the scripture, that part is, can be easy. Um, yeah. And yeah, that was the biggest thing for me. I love that. And I love how you talked about how, just like, I love that part. You always mentioned about how God always has a place mm -hmm. for every single person. He is so aware of us. And that's something like I've grown to know on my mission even throughout my life is that you know even when I'm going through something or I'm not even close to God like I don't have the strongest relationships with him sometimes in my life but throughout those moments he never leaves you like he's mm -hmm. always right by your side and there's always another step you can take to mm -hmm. come closer to him that's like something we always emphasize is like there's always like more knowledge to know mm -hmm. more things to learn and just those things always are helping you grow stronger with Christ and with Jesus and God. And I mean, I know you talked about your, your husband mm -hmm. passing away as well. And, um, that was like really touching to me just cause like I've had loved ones in my life pass away and 
at those times, like, it's kind of uncertain. You're like, mm-hmm. uh, how is there, like, what's going to happen to me? What's going to yeah. happen to this person? Am I going to see them again? Mm-hmm. And so, like, how was, like, knowing about this plan, how has that brought comfort to you? It it brings comfort to me for so many reasons. It just, it, I think it gives it away for all of us here to eventually all be together and worship as well. Um, it's, I mean, honestly, I just feel like I can't, I know I've said it like 10 times, but it's just such a beautiful plan where I have realized like all the hardship, everything Mm. had led me to that moment. Um, you know, God never left me even when I felt like he did. Jesus never left me even when I felt like Mm -hmm. he did. In fact, they were, you know, they still had this plan for me that I knew nothing about. And so then it all happened. And I was like, this is I mean, it just, it had made sense for, I don't have a better way to put it other than just say every bad thing that had happened seemed to make so much more sense now. Um, I realized I was being loved and protected the whole time Mm -hmm. that, that questioning my faith and everything has got me to where I needed to go. Mm -hmm. And those things weren't bad because he was still planning for me. He didn't let me go just because I had fallen off faith. He was actually guiding me to where I needed to go and I just didn't realize it. So I think it specifically for hardship just made me just understand that maybe more that maybe we're not always supposed to understand. Maybe it's going to be down the road when you realize why all these things happen. Yeah. Um, and maybe some of those answers we won't get till after we pass, but it just gave me comfort. Like everything I've been through was actually for a reason, yeah. um, to actually lead me to more peace, even though they were hard things that I've been through Mm -hmm. without any of those things, I wouldn't be where I am right now either. Um, and I also believe with this, we get to see all of our loved ones, you know, my, you know, my, my parents and everybody else are still acting, you know, Protestant Christians. And I believe with this plan, like I still get to see them too. It's, it's not like just because we are different, um, that we won't get to be together again one day. Mm -hmm. And that was another thing that gave me peace. Mm -hmm. Um, being able to come and tell my family all the things too. Yeah. I love Mm -hmm. that you talked about this kind of like, almost, I like to call it like an invisible string, kind of just like connecting everything together Mm -hmm. and bringing this whole plan that God has for individuals, Mm -hmm. each one of us. It's not the same plan. It's all individualized and different. And it just, like you said, brings so much comfort and peace mm-hmm. to us. And um, that's something that you know, we really love to share. And we love talking about these uh, past couple minutes. And we wanted to extend um, kind of an invitation to y'all who are watching at home um, that through this plan, there's so much comfort and peace that are provided to you, uh, not only for you as an individual, but your family. This plan is for families and it's for happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so simple. I think we try to make God so complex, but really it's just the simple truths that we know. And so we want to invite you to reach out to your local missionaries um, and ask these questions that, you know, Jamie, you had questions. And mm-hmm. from finding out this plan, like those questions were able to be answered and you're able to find mm-hmm. greater peace in your life. And that's something we have loved. But thank you so much for being here with us on the bonfire today. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and Mm -hmm. we'd love to close with a song. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time on the bonfire. Life will get us down sometimes But remember it's only sometimes The light may seem dark outside But just give it some time cause it won't abide He knows a path that I should take So my own growth cannot shake The bigger picture's in his eyes So I will trust him with my life He is the one I will follow And when no one's by my side 
He is the one I will turn to in all times in my life. He is the one I confide in, cause he knows me perfectly. He is the one, the only one I follow faithfully. Something I desire He has the knowledge I need acquire His arms are outreached He's given me everything He knows the path that I should take So my own growth cannot shake Bigger pictures in his eyes So I will trust him with my life He is the one I will follow And when no one's by my side He is the one I will turn to In all times in my life He is the one I confide in Cause he knows me perfectly He is the one only one I follow faithfully And even when darkness blinds my sight I know he's fighting at my side When I feel I'm too far lost He reminds me I'm not cause he paid the cost He is the one I will follow Even when no one's by my side He is the one I will turn to in all times in my life. He is the one I confide in, cause he knows me perfectly. He is the one, the only one that loves me perfectly. He loves me perfectly.